Welcome to a video from the digitallifestyle.com. In this video, we're going to have a look at what's new with the Windows 10 anniversary update. This is the update to Windows 10 that's free for Windows 10 users, released 2nd of August 2016, and replaces the November update for Windows 10, which itself was. Um, it was an update from the July when Windows 10 was originally released. So this is the one year anniversary version. And there's quite a few changes, some subtle, some a uh, bit more um, different. But most of the changes really do enhance how Windows 10 works. And I'm just going to show you some of the main ones in here. There are a few others, but uh, let's concentrate on some of the main ones. So I'm going to start with the start menu. And here I'm using this on a Surface Pro 3. And next to it... I've got a Surface Pro 4, which is running the original version, so we can look at the differences. Right, so the first thing we see is different is this start menu on here. Um, here is what it used to be. So you used to have your um, descriptions of all apps, power settings, and then most used there, and then using and then um, you get suggested. If you had new apps, they would show up there. So to get to all apps, you had to go into that list. Now in Windows 10, the All Apps list is there. So it's much easier just to quickly glance over and um, and find the app that you're looking for. So the All Apps list is there, the most used is there, and new ones appear up here. They've done it by getting rid of some of the text, and if you need to see the labels, those are still there. And you can enhance these, that you can add extra folders into there if you want as well. So that makes it a bit easier to find what you're looking for, and especially if it's off in the all apps list. In full screen, tablet mode, it's changed as well. Okay, so there we are in tablet mode. You see we've got the folders still lists like we had before, and um, now it's the, for the all apps list. You go there and then you see all the apps and it's a nice easy list to look at. Previously there's the old start screen and to get the all apps list you went up here um, and then you've got the all apps list there on the side so um, this makes it a lot easier just to see what you want and you can switch between pin tiles and all apps Really, really easily. So there's nice enhancements to the to the start menu. Right, other thing that's changed is the notifications. So notifications now look slightly differently. They're nicely grouped together, and we can see images on there like that. So this is the new one, and if I flick over, here's the flat of sort of all one with them just in a list like that and then there's the tweets and there's some other ones as well what you can do in this now is uh, you can choose the priority of these so let's sorry let's go back um, let's say the, f the mail which I can tap on there and I can choose um, whether to make this high priority or not so I can go into the settings and I can make this um, so, so it always shows three and it's normal priority. I could make it top so it would show at the top as well. Currently Cortana is set at the top so so currently Cortana is set at the top but uh, you can choose that and you can do it per app basis so you can choose which one you, which one you like. Now something else which is new which is um, notifications from a phone so that is showing that I've got a missed call notification from my Nexus 6P which is running Android and I installed the Cortana app on that currently Cortana is only available in the US uh, you have to get the APK file separately if you want to put it anywhere in, in the UK uh, but it also it's Windows Phone as well I don't think I've got any on um, showing here from Windows Phone so you would see um, notifications from your phone like low battery um, you would see um, missed calls and that kind of thing via Cortana, which I think is really good. Uh, something else which is new as well, and I'm going to have to try and set one up on this. Let me load up, uh, say, Tweetium. Okay, so you'll see down here that the mail has 
uh, gone to one on there because there's one unread mail and other apps can show that as well like Twitter and Tweetium um, any can sort of what called badges so uh, it's a quick way of seeing so on the desktop version or sorry on the uh, previous build you wouldn't have seen it on the release version you wouldn't have seen that so that's new as well you notice as well the um, notification countdown here is at three and it's in a slightly different position than it was uh, before 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 it was over here before it was there and now it's it's moved across and you didn't get those badges before I also found as well and this does vary I don't know if I've got any to show on here um, Oh, so those are the notifications from Windows Phone. I, for I forgot to mention that before. So those are from Windows Phone. Um, you can reply to messages. So this is from the Nexus 6, but I can send a message back there. Um, so I can send something back from there using Cortana. Um, so I could you, you can reply to emails and text messages from there, which I thought was, was pretty good. Right, what else can I show you? Let's have a look at something else that's brand new called Windows Ink. And for that I'm going to need the Surface Pen. So, i got a Surface Pen here. I can tap the button on there and it brings up the new Windows Ink workspace. So you've got things like um, suggested apps. You've got recently used apps, green sketch, sketchpad and sticky notes. Let's have a look at sticky notes first. Uh, so sticky notes uh, are notes like that and I can create a new note and uh, I can write on there and draw notes and that keeps my sticky notes on there. Now something else you can do as well which currently only works on the US English is if you write a date or a time it turns that blue and when it's blue it can be created appointment in, or a reminder in Cortana. So a shame it's not available in the UK, but I'm sure it will come soon. But uh, that's quite handy. So you can handwrite, like, you know, ring back on Thursday and change that, made that into an appointment. So that's sticky notes. And then, of course, uh, you can see this. My uh, sticky notes are still there, even though I've closed it. But uh, the other new thing is screen sketch and sketch pad. So let's look at sketch pad. Uh, this is much for the more artistic in you but you can uh, draw on the screen just create drawings and there's even a nice ruler which you can adjust like that and then create straight lines. Um, so you could do that for diagram drawings or uh, in writing notes or whatever you need to do really. Um, it's quite a handy little tool and you can export it and share it out so you can share it via email or Twitter, Facebook as an image or you can save it for, for later. And uh, Screen Sketch is very similar but it allows you to annotate the screen so I can say highlight changes here and here and see a new app there and uh, you know right on the right on there and, and uh, yeah, annotate the screen and then again share that as well which I think is pretty good. One of the other things it does mention Microsoft did show off was uh, some of the map in 3D modes but I've never got that to work so I'm not going to show that now. Right what about Microsoft Edge that's had uh, a few changes so um, at first it looks pretty similar um, but there are extensions in here and so if I go to extensions and you can see I've got Office extension, Evernote, Web Clipper, Adblock, Translator and there are more available in the store as well. So if you're a LastPass user you can install LastPass, so there's Mouse Gestures, uh, OneNote Web Clipper which is actually pretty handy so I think I'll install that one and you see how it just installs through the store and then adds itself into um, into Microsoft Edge. So it's a way of uh, Edge having ex uh, sort of extended functionality by third parties or by Microsoft and it's a simple way delivered through the store and uh, uh, I can turn that on and it adds that extra functionality in there. So extensions are really good, ad block is good, all that's uh, good stuff as well. I mentioned the store, see the store has had a bit of a change, uh, it looks different and when you go on app some of the details 
screen for apps has changed as well so you notice this is one for Facebook it shows it's available PC some say PC phone surface hub and whole lens I'll show you in a minute but you also get information about uh, which version of Windows is, is uh, required and then you get your sort of app details let's find uh, a more recent let's say Netflix see that's available on PC and mobile you can choose between which screenshots you want and um, it shows you which version. I want to try and find a Windows 10 one. There we go, it's a Windows 10 app, Xbox, PC, Mobile and HoloLens. So it shows you it's available all those platforms, uh, which I think is pretty good. Also, uh, the menus have been tweaked slightly and say download and updates is there, so that shows me my available updates, but also shows you recent activity as well, which uh, it wasn't shown previously. I've got auto updates switched off, so I manually update them, but if you have them manually automatically switched on to um, update automatically, then this list is quite handy to see what has changed. Other changes are around Cortana, and uh, Cortana is now available on the lock screen, uh, so I can show you what that looks like. Here's my Encore 8 tablet, and you see I've got there try try saying so I can say play me some music. So there you go, it understood that, and um, it's now playing some music using Groove. So uh, that's a way of using Cortana directly from the lock screen without you having to unlock the PC, which is pretty good. The other thing that's new is sharing uh, reminders in Cortana. So you can go to anything you want that uses share, so like a web page, Cortana reminder. It adds the page as an attachment. It could be an image that you're sharing. And I can remember, and I can say, read this in 10 minutes. So let's uh, say read site. And I can say uh, when I arrive at home or uh, more interest, probably more useful in 30 minutes, and there you go. I've added that. It works for pictures and all sorts, so um, it's a very handy way of doing stuff. Let's go up and photo. So here's a photo, I can share that. It's a OneDrive photo, so it'll download it. Share as a Cortana reminder, includes the picture, and I'm going to write, do that at, um, let's say, 12, 11.55, so let's go for 12, probably still in the video then. Uh, and I can remind myself to look. Okay, remind. So there you go. So that's added a reminder uh, to Cortana with the image. And one of the things changing the notifications is you get the image on Cortana notifications, which you didn't before. And of course, also note Cortana is the sort of the glue that holds the notifications between Windows Phone, Android Phone, iOS. It brings it all together in one place. So those notific cross device notifications, which we saw before, are all powered by Cortana. Okay, another new feature is Connect, which is a Miracast app. So uh, this you can mirror your phone, if it supports Miracast, to your PC. Great for presentations and things. If you've got a phone like the 950 or 950XL that supports Continuum, then um, you get extra functionality as well. So here's a 950XL that is projecting the screen, but the good thing about um, on Continuum is I can use my phone here as a separate device while keeping this up. So effectively it turns the, P the phone into a PC, you can use it with a big, uh, with a, a big screen with a Roku stick or something like that. But I can also use it from here, so these are Continuum uh, apps, and all this is on running on my phone now, and you can see it looks like it's a PC, and I could also be taking a call on my phone at the same time, so that's a completely new app, great for presentations and things like that. Uh, a couple of things we've got, we've got the uh, Bash shell, and if you know, Bash is the... Um, a Linux command line tool and uh, Bash is built straight into there so uh, you can do things like ls 
and so that'll give you a directory listing um, and so on so let me just try there you go ls and you can see it's in exactly linux style bash command prompt uh, so if you're used to that you'll know exactly what that is some of the things are the settings have been enhanced uh, things are just a little easier to find now um, you see we've got icons for the different sections which we didn't have before so you've got icons for the main section and icons for the subsections oh my reminders just come through um, on my phone and on my other tablet as well um, it's funny it's not come through on here yet I think it's because the clocks are slightly out on this so we should see that shortly um, so settings have changed and there's now a dark mode so if we go to uh, the colours we're in light mode at the moment I prefer that but in dark mode you can switch and uh, you get windows in a dark mode which makes the um, more sense if you're using low light conditions or maybe on a tablet sometimes I find it looks better it looks better on a phone for some reason but on the surface I prefer it in the light mode but it, it, again it's down to your choice um, there's new emojis on there, there's support for containers in Hyper-V but that's probably something, uh, a video in its own right which you can do. So those are the main changes that uh, I'm looking at. You see that there's, there's subtle changes around the image, the icons and things like that for, um, for the network icons. I do remember actually another one is the volume. If you've got multiple audio devices, you can control multiple volume on there at the same time and things like that. So there's a lot of subtle changes that make a big improvement overall. And so I've got the um, preview release on here and on my search profile, I've got the original one. I much prefer using this one, especially the exit extensions, the start menu and the um, Cortana Im improvements and notifications. And there you go. There we've got the, the notification. So we've got the image on here and everything and on... Um, the previously that you know you couldn't do that at all so that's really a nice looking notification on there and uh, we should see that up here in action center something you couldn't previously do as well so I think that looks uh, much better as well so action center start menu caught on a lot of nice improvements and well worth having you don't really get the option if you've got the consumer version of Windows 10 you're going to get the update at some point anyway starting from um, August 2nd, so I'm running the preview version, you just go check updates and it'll download the version once it's live from Microsoft, even if you don't you'll get that uh, You'll get that through anyway. So, I, so I got, like I said, I'm running the preview version but I don't think there'll be that many changes. There is um, a new Skype app coming down as well, uh, which is replacing the messaging um, and the phone app, so there's the new Skype app. Uh, this is a what's called UWP. So this is an all, uh, um, an app for Windows 10, Windows 10 Mobile, all the platform, all the, all the Windows 10 device compatible platforms. And uh, this is a new version of Skype. And uh, they're still doing development work on this. We should have the release version pretty soon, but it's still in preview. But you can do all the kind of things you'd expect to do in Skype. You know, you make calls and messages, and you've got your address books and and so on. It's a replacement for the for the desktop version. So I think that's all the changes I'm going to show you in this video. I'll try and keep it a bit, uh, a bit shorter. The all the, the apps have added on a whole sort of like the Groove Music and uh, the Film and TV, but they they're sort of not part of Windows 10. They're just getting shipped with this uh, sort of addition. I should have mentioned the Maps as well. Um, the Maps is a different version, but again that can be shipped with the standard version of Windows. But uh, all these things tie together quite nicely. So you can go back on our YouTube channel and look back at all the versions of Windows uh, 10 or right back to the very first previews but you can certainly look back at how this build has progressed and all the development that Microsoft put into it and I'll probably also do a separate phone one as well. So thanks for watching this video you can follow me on Twitter at IS Dixon and uh, on, uh, you can see all the videos on our YouTube channel and more information on the digitalizedstyle.com.